It all starts in a small town with a security guard at a gate, he stops a couple on a bike there Sarah and her boyfriend. And because the guard knows her he lets them in so they ride off into town they get to her house where the boyfriend looks very nervous because he doesn't want to tell Sarah's dad Joshua about them wanting to leave town together they walk into the house with a worried Joshua waiting for his daughter on the couch he is clearly upset by their decision to get married so early. And she needs to listen to him even if they argue about some things, but Sarah is very serious about this and wants to marry her man so she goes upstairs to pack her stuff and leave leaving Joshua with her man Nikki Joshua tells him that even though he thinks that he's building a new family he's actually tearing one apart turns out Nikki has lost both his parents. And he lives a bit further away Joshua said she was planning to go to college until he showed up, but Nikki loves Sarah and Joshua doesn't doubt that, but he thinks they should hold off on making this decision and give it a little more time this makes Nikki run out the door, and when Sarah comes back downstairs, Nikki has already taken off and she doesn't see him on the road, she goes back in the house, pissed at her dad and spends the night awake until Nikki calls he tells her that he is scared. But she wants him to show her that he loves her by just coming by and taking her away but the phone disconnects that's when Nikki sees. Something weird in the sky and Sarah passes out on her bed something took the section of the city up into the sky as Nikki watches, but there's nothing he could do do the next day Joshua is on a run around his neighborhood and when he gets home he is stopped by a neighbor Pat who asks if he lost power at his home Joshua did lose power, but that's not all the phone and water are also not working, he thinks it's probably the bad weather. It's gotten very cold and the papers aren't here yet as well. They introduce themselves to each other the man asks for his wife, but she has left Joshua a year ago, the man's wife also died as well, and he seems a bit okay about it, but there is something wrong, and they decide to go into town together inside Elaine is worried about the groceries going bad. But her husband Daniel is too focused on his work to give her any attention he mumbles about his supposedly important lawyer job like it is some kind of war she looks outside and sees her son Sean playing. With the dog something is off because the school bus is supposed to pick him up by now, Daniel simply tells her to use the other car to take him to school, because he'll add 10 minutes to his work commute the phone doesn't work, and when she suggests trying the neighbor's phone he doesn't like that idea too, because he is avoiding them on purpose back at Joshua's home, he asked Sarah to get some of the stuff the housekeeper was supposed to get today, but Sarah is still upset about what happened last. Night, he tells her that the only reason Nikki left last night was because he saw that Joshua was right Sarah tries to clap back saying she should go live with her mother she goes back upstairs as Joshua tells her that he expects her to be here when he gets back from work Joshua is on his way to work and drives past the security guard Mike who tells a man that he doesn't know why the power is gone either but he will contact the people soon. Mike then sees Sean playing with his dog but the dog has spotted something in the bushes it runs right at it and Sean gives chase Mike runs after them and Sean comes running back saying there is something there some kind of freak Mike draws his gun and slowly steps to the garbage cans but there is nothing there Joshua and Pat are talking as they drive to work and the man mentions that he was a former editor of a magazine and now he's retired but as they were talking and driving when they ran into something weird an electric looking force field Blocking the road, they are shocked to see it going around the town their town is now set down on a platform in an alien world with other similar structures around them back at the house, Sarah steals some money and plans to run away so she is packed up and left back at the edge of town, Joshua and Pat are still stunned but Joshua wants to go back to check on his daughter, but before that Pat wants to touch the wall he leans in, and it pushes him back it's keeping them all inside Daniel shows up and is also shocked by what he is seeing, but with no warning the wall sucks up Pat into it Sarah finds herself in the woods, but she is not alone in there she keeps walking but gets the feeling that she might be being watched then all of a sudden it jumps at her an alien man grabs her and tells her to calm down she can understand him. And he tells her that they need her help she creams when she sees what he actually looks like he tells her it is a disease his elders say that the aid is causing this. 
and he wants her to come with him because his clan has left the sick to die, he thinks there is hope if she comes to help them, he tells her she is not on earth she's on a moon of a distant planet, but she knows where she is she just left her house and is in the park, he begs her for help, so she agrees, Joshua makes it home, and he looks everywhere, but Sarah is nowhere to be found outside David meets his family, and they are freaked out about it. All he tells her to get in the house with Sean while he finds out what's going on Joshua is driving around looking for Sarah worried what happened to her he runs into a church and finds the priest who tries to calm down Joshua, but he doesn't have the answers Joshua is looking for he's really worried about Sarah, because she ran away in some a alien stretcher with pillars pad holding is laying him still, on. and as he struggles something comes from above that he can't understand the people have gathered out on the street to decide on what is going on and what they should do after that Joshua rushes in asking about his daughter, but they want to know what happened to Pat he tells them that Pat might not even be alive anymore and that they should all get their resources and collect them at the church. Mike calls Joshua over and tells him about an intruder that was behind his house the previous night, but Mike couldn't find him, but he did find Sarah's bag this makes Joshua call out to the group to ask for help in finding his daughter but Daniel and the rest don't want to accept Mike Sarah and the alien get to the wall. And he tells her that this is where they will pass through to the other side he has a breach so they can cross safely on the other side she sees all the sick aliens and they look like there is no saving them past this point Sarah is. Saddened by this as he shows her his parents they are not moving anymore because of the illness, but they are still alive, he wants her to use the medical device to help them, but it's just a cassette player, but he is desperate as his illness gets worse, and he can't move anymore, while he still holds her arm and now she's stuck Joshua and Mike are in the woods looking for Sarah they hear something and run towards it, they find Pat wandering around. And he seems fine, he tells them he was examined by the aliens' machines, and is astonished about how advanced they are more than humans, Joshua tells Mike to take Pat back to the town while he keeps looking for Sarah, but Pat tells him that the aliens will not hurt anyone if they cooperate with them, he tells them that the neighborhood has been transported across the galaxy back home the people want to use Daniel's generator to get a radio to work, so they can call out for help, but he is not letting them use it, but they are not taking no for an Answer so they all go around the back and break into Daniel's house as he protests the rest are taking everything they have to the church, but they're stopped by Pat who tells them that they're here for a reason because they didn't kill him back in the woods Joshua hears the calls of his daughter when he gets sucked into the wall as well Sarah is stuck with the alien who tells her that he never meant to cause her harm at the examination facility. Joshua is strapped to the stretcher they wrap him. In foil and an arm extends locking on his face while the same examining machine descends from the top and a smaller arm comes out from it jamming itself in his mouth as the alien watches on back at the house Daniel finds his gun as he hears the door knocking and goes out to find the people asking him to pull his food into the church like them. But Daniel pulls a gun instead Mike shows up and tells Daniel to put down the gun because it won't help him against what they're up against against here. So he takes his gun inside at the alien facility the alien welcomes Joshua and tells him they are happy with the human's condition they are all laid on a couch looking at things as they talk to Joshua about the light that connects all living things across the galaxy. But humans are too busy with themselves to notice that they wanted to ease the transition so they brought the entire neighborhood here along with the humans they brought humans here so they can do the manual labor on their planet and the aliens can sit back and enjoy their lives the other species that they have tired couldn't survive the air on this planet, but humans make the perfect slaves for manual work, they will leave some control-like sexual urges to themselves, but the rest will be controlled by the aliens Joshua tries to argue, but the aliens claim that they know more about humans than even humans themselves humans are strong, but they're much better at destroying things rather than creating and the aliens need a strong armed species to carry out the physical work and humans qualify for that they can also survive in this air, which is a bonus they tell him to talk to his neighbors and convince them about the reason they were brought here and that there is no escape revolting won't help them only obedience is beneficial Joshua is only worried about Sarah and they promise to reunite them if they find her so Joshua agrees Joshua is sent back to the ground and he still hears Sarah's voice calling for help he walks 
over to the boy searching through the woods and finds the portal she tells him to walk through it, it takes him to the other side, but he can't touch her because he will be infected if he does according to the alien Joshua is filled with dread so he wants to break off the alien's hand with a rock the alien agrees because he's given up so Joshua smashes the alien's hand freeing his daughter, but he still can't touch her he puts a jacket over her and lifts her up as they walk away leaving the Aliens behind at the church, the priest says they will gather resources as more people come in, he tells them that they should be strong Pat gets on stage and tells everyone that things are so much different now, and that they need to accept these changes so they can survive in this new environment he tells them that they should just give in to the aliens because they are much stronger. And humans should just submit as Pat was talking about survival Joshua walks in carrying his daughter he tells. Everyone that they're really here so they can use humans as slaves healthy and hard-working slaves, but Joshua wants to stop them because they want to bring the rest of the population here Sarah aliens from yet another planet that were brought here to be slaves like humans, but they couldn't survive the air. Sarah has the same disease as the aliens because she touched him Joshua wants everyone to catch the disease so the aliens will think they can't survive this way they can prevent them from. Grabbing the rest of the species, he's already made the choice, and goes over to touch her hand to infect himself everyone is shocked at this, but then the priest joins him and one by one the rest follow in infecting themselves even P joins in at the end every human has turned into stone inside the church as it all ends, we go back to earth, no one knows what happened to the neighborhood that disappeared, not knowing that these people sacrificed themselves so the rest can live on teaching us that. Being human isn't just surviving, it is sacrifice for the greater good the end.